Hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello. My name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I'm here because I want to improve my English. Hopefully, that is the same situation with you. The idea is to learn few new words every day and in the process expand our vocabulary. Where do these words come from? Well, there, there is no system, there is no rhythm or rhyme to it. These are just some words I picked up here and there over the years that I wanted to learn properly. And uh, this forces me to sit down and learn them formally because I had to put them on a piece of paper, look up the meaning properly and so on and so forth. And I figured why not, why not uh, put them on the video and see if other people will find it helpful. These are good words to know if you're preparing for the SAT or GRE or GMAT or TOEFL or, and these are good words to know in general period. These are good words to know because uh, one comes across these words uh, in one's reading in college and, and graduate school. Okay, enough of the talk. The very first thing, the very first word that I want to start today with is Confluence. I've used this word uh, many times before in the past uh, but I never actually formally covered it. Confluence, pronounce con flu ons. And here is the key that helps you uh, uh, helps you with the pronunciation of the vowels, with the examples and so forth. Confluence. It's a noun. What does it mean? It simply means, it, it literally means flowing together. Literally, it, it mean, what it means is flowing together. If you have a body of water, if you have a river here, or a stream here, and there's another stream here, and they come together, that point is the confluence, coming together, merging. Let's put them down here. Merging and coming together. For example, the words that we cover here in these videos, there is no confluence. There is no confluence of ideas. There is no confluence of theme. Uh, they, are, they are from all over the place. For example, the next word that I'm going to talk about has absolutely nothing to do with what we just talked about. Next word is, that's it. That's the end of it. Confluence is called. The word that I want to talk about next is something that you would need if you're trying to figure out the antonym of it. If you're going on a street, if you're going on a street and the street happens to break up into two parts, how do you describe it? How do you articulate it? Any, let me first put down this word here before I continue. In the In the colloquial term, in the in, in, in the colloquial term, most people would describe as describe the situation as a fork in the road. I have yet to find one, but that's what they call it. They call it fork in the road. And what they're trying to tell you is that the street that you're traveling on, is the street that you're traveling on, will break up into two parts. Just like here, this is converging. This, these two are converging into one one thing, and this is the confluence of the two. Two, two streets or two rivers or two streams or two ideas for that matter or two themes coming together. You can use it in a literal sense or in a figurative uh, uh, sense. Here it's just the opposite. You're going here and then it's going to break up into two parts. In the, in the, in the, in the colloquial terms it's, this is called a fork. The five here simply means that if you want to, if you want to learn this word properly uh, type in this uh, tag Keshwani Keshwani prep, one word, dash vocab, dash, and then day five, and you will see this word there. The word that you're looking for, which will be which call which will qualify as the as the antonym of confluence, is bifurcate. By as in two for okay, simple word bifurcate, which simply means uh, to divide 
into two parts or branches as you can see right here if on the other hand if on the other hand you're dealing with the situations where the, the street is coming is street is going this way and all of a sudden it breaks up into three parts it's very simple instead of by you'll have try that's all try being three and the word would be try for kid try for kid it simply means to break it up, break up into to branch out into three parts three parts that's all let's learn one more word a good word uh, that uh, some uh, that you that might come in handy sometime that's it bifurcate and trifurcate and of course the colloquial term for for this notion is what we call what people ordinary people have when they're describing when they're giving directions they will say well you're going on the road and the road is going to fork or you're going to find a fork in the road they would say i still have never understood what uh, what, what that actually means fork in the road the fork so uh, does not have just two prongs the fork would be something like this wouldn't it anyway. that's it i have I have actually pulled over at this point when I'm going on the road and when I approach this area here I have actually pulled over at the point of bifurcation and gotten out of the car to look for the bloody fork I have yet to find one anyway the next word is abeyance oh B ans obeyance which is a noun to leave something in abeyance to leave something in abeyance means to put something off Till later. For example, if you're discussing something and all of a sudden a person is trying to distract you to some other topic, uh, for example, uh, let's see what, what kind of example that I gave you. Uh, you're talking to a child and then we're talking about a homework that's not being done and he or she introduces the topic of the of the dinner as to what we're going to have. You might say, "Well, we'll leave that in abeyance." In other words, we will deal with it later. We'll put this. Uh, we'll postpone that topic. Right now, we're talking about this particular topic. To leave something in abeyance means to put something as David stands for something off till later. To put something off till later, or to postpone. To postpone. To leave something off till later. In other words. What, what, what you're telling them is that we will we will deal we'll deal with it whatever it is we'll deal with it later or to more put it more formally it means to put something to put something in a state of inactivity not activity other inactivity to put something to put something in a state of inactivity, we won't deal with it right now. When the time comes, we'll, 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 we'll deal with it. In the meantime, we're putting it in abeyance. Let's learn one more word then, after this one. The word was abeyance. Okay, there we go. And again, bifurcate or other confluence the last word that I want to talk about today is euphemism euphemism 
you for miss um. euphemism there is also a noun what does it mean euphemism uh, euph euphemism is again in the colloquial term again where do I put the word colloquial because I can never can never can remember how to spell the bloody thing that's a U in colloquial uh, terms people instead of saying euphemism instead of this, there is a U here instead of saying uh, euphemism people of course do not do use that word uh, they say PC they would say PC which, suppose, which, which stands for politically correct, correct so what does euphemism mean let me first let me first write down the meaning we'll talk about where this comes from the being PC being politically correct that is euphemism means use to use a use of a pleasant or inoffensive inoffensive term in place of something that might be considered unpleasant or offensive unpleasant or offensive they used to have very colorful term to describe people from Africa who kind of well I was about to say who came here they did not come here they were dragged here with the chain around their neck but anyway the people from Africa who, was, who were brought here rather they had a colorful term to describe them nowadays they are simply known as uh, African-American or people of color uh, African-American or people of color is a euphemism to describe to use here we're using a term a more pleasant term or or a term that is considered less offensive in place of something that is now considered as inoffensive or unpleasant another example would be to instead of calling somebody retarded children nobody nobody is called retarded these days people are mentally challenged nobody is uh, uh, handicapped anymore people are physically challenged and of course there are no old people nowadays they are all senior citizens and so forth you get the idea you understand people are no longer short they are just vertically challenged and of course no one is fat they are just pleasantly plump I'm just being silly and you understand when I say pleasantly plump uh, anyway you get the idea so to calling somebody senior citizen is, is, is employing is to employ euphemism uh, if somebody says something in a very nice way, in a very polite way, you might uh, you might retort, you might uh, oh, here's a good word. We'll learn this later. You might uh, reply to it, or you might answer to it as euphemistically put. To put something euphemistically is to put it in a very nice way, in a politically correct way, so that uh, so that uh, you are sensitive to other people's. Uh, uh, other people's uh, asking the sensitivity but that sounds like a very silly sentence uh, so that you are sensitive to other people's uh, preferences let's put it that way I didn't want to finish the sentence by saying so that you're sensitive to other people's sensitivity that just sounds like a silly sentence to other people's preferences all right anyway that was it that was the end that was the end for today not to not too many words uh, and that's it. So we had confluence, we had bifurcate, trifurcate, abeyance, and euphemism. That's all. I hope uh, you found these words uh, interesting. These are good words to know, as I said before. Uh, and I'm sure you have some appreciation for these words. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be sitting there spending your time watching this video right now. These are good words to know. Have a habit. Have a, have a, have a habit. Have a regiment. Uh, so that... Uh, so that uh, you you learn learn some words every day.
Regiment has two meanings. Literally, it means a unit of army. A regiment, I believe, I'm not sure, but it's made up of a couple of battalions. Not that I know what that means, but it's a unit of our army. That is the literal meaning of the word. Uh, as a verb, regiment, that's a noun that I just told you. As a verb, to, have a, to, to be regimented means to follow a strict guideline, to follow a strict way of doing things, to follow rules, as you would, as one would in, in the military. So have a regiment and stick with it. Learn a few words every day. But the key, key, key here is to, is to stick with it. Most people do not. It's like uh, you have this uh, New Year's resolution to get on the treadmill every day and you do it for a few days in the beginning of the year and uh, that's the end of that. Uh, it's like that for everybody, really, including myself. But have a regimen so that you learn two, three, five, ten words, whatever it is, every uh, few words every day. It doesn't matter how many, it has to be every day. Okay. Anyway, enough of the pep talk. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor over the internet uh, via Skype. I also tutor in, uh, in person, obviously, and over the telephone for all of these stages that you see there, for the GRE, the GMAT, the SAT, and the TOEFL. I do both the math and the verbal part. Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Let me know what you need help with, and I'll be more than happy to work with you. All right? Thanks.